Welcome to Tuesday's Two Cents Worth. Today, I'm meeting with Jane Stromwell from RBC Wealth Management. Jane is my financial advisor and has always given me great advice. Today, she's going to share some tips on getting ready for retirement. Perfect. We're going to jump right in and we're going to focus in on the years, maybe one to two years prior to retirement and what that looks like. What are things that we can do to prepare for that? And so we always like to say that it's important that we never stop saving, that we always make sure and do it in a very tax friendly way, but also to make sure that our investments are aligned with being able to retire. And what that means is how aggressively we're invested will impact what we have at the end. So um, one of the things that's important is to just if we are able to, most of us are, that once we hit the age of 50, we have the ability to do what's called a catch-up contribution to our tax-deferred investment vehicles, whether that's a 401k or whether that is a Roth IRA or a regular IRA. But the magic age is 50. And so once that takes place, please reach out to your advisor of choice to get some guidance on how to do that. Another area that I is very near and dear to me is to make sure that you have a retirement plan in, in place. And maybe that's just a baseline. Um, I always like to say, get it on paper. And once we get it on paper, we're more likely to act upon it. Just like any goals. Yes. Um, the other part for that is when we approach retirement, we want to make sure that we factor in all of our income sources. One of those is Social Security. There may be value in reaching out to the Social Security Administration, either electronically or via a conference call to get some guidance. When is the best time for you to begin your Social Security income? The other part of it is to, we've talked about this in the past, but make sure that you put together a budget. Mm -hmm. And many people are hesitant to do that because they don't stick to it. And just like a retirement plan, I encourage individuals to put it down on paper. It doesn't mean that you have to abide by that, but it's a way for you to get going and to see what it really is going to cost you when you are fully retired. Adding up all those monthly expenses can be a big, big surprise too. Right. One area that um, is something that I encourage all of you is to reach out and get a, uh, accounting advice, get tax advice. Why? Because as we all know, taxes are an inevitable, right? right? They're gonna happen whether we like it or not, but they can certainly impact your style of retirement and it's important to plan for that. So again, when you have the opportunity to tax defer save, that's the best way for you to monitor and manage your tax consequences. What about um, if you had a uh, real estate property, investment property, mm -hmm. would it be better to hang on to that into your retirement or would it be better to maybe, um, you know, maybe sell that off and put the funds elsewhere or does that kind of depend on what the markets are doing or? It depends on all of those. And the factors are we never know what the housing market is gonna look like the day that we walk out the door from active employment. A home can be used, but it is an illiquid use. And so this is an area that is so valuable to get some guidance from your investment advisor on how to utilize a non-liquid investment like property um, and how that's going to help supplement for your retirement years. So again, reach out get some information on what that looks like and what you could be entitled to. Another thing that is so important, we've talked about saving, we've talked about coming up with a plan, we've talked about what are your sources of income going to be, but how are you protecting all of that? Mm -hmm. And we wanna make sure that, especially medical, because that is an unknown as we age, what kind of medical needs we're going to have. So reach out, 
find out what's available to you through Medicare, through Medigap, find out the um, offerings that are available to all of us once we reach the age of 65. There's many different options out there and there is no one perfect option for every single person that is entitled to Medicare. But again, I always say reach out to the source and you have the ability to speak with somebody at the Social Security Administration to obtain those details. There are also people out in the workforce that are sources to us that can provide that information as well. So again, make sure that you're protecting what you've worked for all these years. Something that has become more and more consistent is the need for planning for long-term, whether that's long-term care, whether that is going to be long-term housing, whether that is going to be uh, long-term income sources. And the area that has reached enormous amount of publicity is long-term care insurance. That has changed significantly over the years. And the older uh, products are, um, are out there, but the newer products for long-term care can provide a great alternative. Here's an opportunity to, again, go to the source, go to an insurance specialist that uh, you know and trust to provide you the different options that could be available to you. Mm -hmm. I know I have long-term healthcare insurance okay. and um, we had to pay for it for a brief period of years and then once we were done paying for those years, we're done paying for it now and hopefully I'll never really need it, but if I do, it's good to know it's all taken care of for me. So you received that before you and I met. Mm -hmm. How? What was the process that you used to find out about long-term care well, insurance? <laughs> this is kind of funny, but Travis worked for a company and he was selling those. So oh. of course, the first thing you do is you sell the policies to your relatives. Sure. So Jerry and I signed up right away and we paid for 10 years, quite a, quite a large amount I thought at the time. Sure. But um, now I don't have to worry about it. It's all paid, I have no premiums. And when I need it, it, it has cost of living um, adjustments and all sorts of good things in there. So I feel very comfortable if I ever do need that, yeah. that I've got it. So Sue just hit upon a very interesting fact, and that is to work with people that you know and you trust. And for me, that is so important because there's not one professional that knows everything about everything that we need to do to plan for retirement. So build a team, mm -hmm. build a team that can be a source for you and um, be a source for other people that you may know. There's a, an area that has been interesting to talk about, especially over the last years, about establishing credit and as a source, a potential source that could be a stopgap when you are in need of that. And here is an opportunity to reach out to a banking specialist that would have the ability to share information. And I would suspect that you have good sources in your industry oh, sure. that you could be a great source to many of your clients if, sure. if they have a need to mm -hmm. get information about that. Definitely, definitely. Um, one last thing that we've talked about in terms of protecting, and that is life insurance. And obviously when we pass away, it's no longer a value to us, mm -hmm. but it is valuable to um, our beneficiaries. And here's an opportunity when you put together an estate plan to make a plan to, if you want to leave anything, here is a way that you can do that by having um, life insurance coverage for yourself. And that is a, a source that can be passed along in a very friendly way to your beneficiaries. So again, these are all options. They may not apply to everybody who is watching this, but they are points of asks for making sure that you're properly protected. 
Yeah, so you've given us some good things to, to think about as we're planning. And yeah. retirement might seem like so far off, but uh, the days do fly by. So before right. you know it, you start to reach those, that 65 age and you think, what am I going to do? So, well, and that's so interesting because when um, I was growing up, 65 was the time period that everyone did retire. And uh, we're finding out with our generation that that time frame has extended. Oh, definitely. And um, that can be good and bad, <laughs> but for some people it wasn't what they had planned and so they haven't put together a properly prepared plan. So that's a point that I wanna drive home is take time now while you can and establish some areas that you know are fulfilled. And then maybe after watching this, you're gonna find out, oh my gosh, there's places that I hadn't even contemplated that you want to address and put together a, a time zone for yourself that in the next six months, your time zone is, is that you're gonna make sure that you have contacts with uh, insurance personnel, with banking personnel, with legal personnel, with accounting personnel, and make sure that they're all working together on your behalf. Well, that's great advice, Jane. Thank you very much. You're I'm not, welcome. I'm not planning to retire for a very long time since I just I love my job so much, sure. but it's always good to have a plan in place. So if you're dreaming of retiring someday, Travis and I would highly recommend an appointment with a good financial advisor. Thank you again, Jane, and thank you all for tuning into Tuesday's Two Cents Worth. This is Sue Derby from Shore West Realtors, your local realtor, ready to work hard for you. If you're finding these videos helpful, please go to our YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Thanks again. Thank you so much.